Appreciate it, Steve. Thanks to everybody uh, for coming out on a uh, morning. First of all, I want to send uh, my condolences and thoughts and prayers to the uh, Leach family in the Starkville, Mississippi, Mississippi State community. What a tragic loss for college football. And uh, my wife, as you guys know, is from Starkville and a Mississippi State grad, and her parents and family still live over there. So I know I uh, have a special relationship with that community. And Never worked for Coach Leach, but I've enjoyed getting to know him in my time here in the league. He, uh, when you go to SEC head coaches meetings, you sit alphabetically by schools. So it goes Mississippi, Mississippi State, Missouri, South Carolina, Tennessee, Vanderbilt. So we're kind of on our own little side usually. So I've enjoyed getting to know him and have never worked for him, but was talking with Lincoln Riley yesterday, who obviously has a long history with, with Coach Leach and told Lincoln I felt like I did know him just from all the stories I had heard from Lincoln about Coach Leach. And I think when I was at Oklahoma, I think there were 16 people on our staff that had either played or coached for Mike Leach at different places. Uh, so ton of respect for him and, and um, heartbreaking, tough day for college football as well. Certainly been a too busy couple of weeks since we talked last. I've been on the road recruiting. Uh, as soon as we finish up here, we're hitting the road recruiting as well. It's been great being able to get out and see some young men and, and their families that are committed to South Carolina or that we're trying to get committed to, to South Carolina. Uh, we've got a huge weekend coming up, uh, official visit weekends, and then a bunch of young men that are coming unofficially as well. A lot of our top prospects in the class of 2024 and beyond will, will be up here over the next few days uh, as well. And, and you win with people, and we've got some great people that we're recruiting currently that we're bringing into this program as well. Can't wait to get our players back uh, tomorrow to start bowl practice. They finished up exams last week, and that went really well. We're still waiting on a couple of final grades, but proud of the work our guys did in the classroom. So certainly want to thank everyone over in the Doty Athletic Center for their work uh, this past semester. Uh, we'll practice starting tomorrow and then practice up until December 22nd. We'll break the morning of the 22nd, give them a few days off around the holidays, Christmas time, and then we'll all reconvene in Jacksonville on Christmas night and uh, start practice up there on the morning of the 26th. So couldn't be more excited about that. There's a ton of excitement about the Gator Bowl. Obviously, uh, Greg McGarity, the president of the Gator Bowl, was, was here yesterday and spent some time with Coach Tanner and Chance Miller and, and myself. And... Uh, he can, I don't want to steal their thunder, but there's some awesome things going on down there in Jacksonville right now. And, and the excitement level for, for this game is as high as it's been in a long, long, long time. I know there's going to be a ton of Garnet and Black uh, taking over the city of Jacksonville here in a couple of weeks. Couldn't wait to get down there. A lot of excitement and momentum going into the Gator Bowl. And that's because of the excitement and the momentum that we created here at South Carolina this past season that we continue to build on that momentum, a uh, eight and four team, a nationally ranked team, uh, going to a historic bowl game, beating Clemson for the first time in a while, snapping Clemson's home winning streak that they've had for however many years, six years, back-to-back uh, -back wins for the first time ever in South Carolina football history, and only the seventh team in the history, history of college football to beat two top 10 teams as an unranked team in back-to-back -back weeks. So I feel like some people might need a reminder of some of the things that we've done here at South Carolina this past season and the momentum that we've created since then as well. Uh, maybe outside this building, there's a perception that the momentum slipped. That couldn't be further from the truth uh, from a momentum standpoint. We are uh, moving this program forward. The excitement level from recruits and the excitement level from our current team is at an all-time high. We're constantly trying to get the uh, right people, if you will, on the bus of where we're going. We're taking this program to places that it's never been before, and there's bumps along the way. And sometimes as you climb higher and higher, people get off that bus. There's an old, old saying, Steve Harvey, we showed the team one time about the people on your wagon, and make sure you got the right people on your wagon as you climb the hill. And we are certainly climbing to places that we haven't been before at South Carolina football. And uh, we've got the right people on the wagon, and we're continuing to add people as well to that wagon, to that bus as we move forward as well. Wish I could show you some of the text messages and phone calls that I've gotten from current players on our team and guys that we're recruiting as well over the last 48, 72 hours that makes, uh, really validates what we're doing here as a program. 
as well. And part of that momentum that I'm talking about that we've create, we're continuing to build on is hiring Dow Loggins as our offensive coordinator. Uh, I told you guys when we had that press conference over in the stadium the weekend after the Clemson game that there was a ton of interest in, in this position and that my phone was blowing up. And that is exactly the, uh, the case. It was blowing up. And I talked to a lot of people, a lot of people that were interested in this position, sitting head coaches in college football that reached out to me, current coordinators in the NFL that reached out to me, current Power Five coordinators. I easily could go out and hire the hot name, the guys that when you guys read the hot boards on some of y'all's websites, the names that were on there that the general public thinks that's the guru and that's the guy that we need to bring into the program. I'm not interested in winning the, program, the, the press conference, guys. I'm interested in hiring the best coach available for what we need as a program. I'm interested in not hiring the name that people recognize. I'm interested in hiring the guy that can continue to move this program forward. There are a lot of hot names, if you will, last year out there in college football. They got hired places that people that are not as aware of what's going on in college football said, oh my God, that is a home run hire by that school. Well, some of those schools are sitting home for Christmas right now because they're not even in a bowl game with what they did. So talk to a ton of people, all right? Clayton White and Pete Limbo, when we hired those two guys, probably there wasn't a lot of fanfare when we hired Clayton White and, pretty, and Clayton, uh, Clayton White and Pete Limbo. I'd say they've turned out to be pretty damn successful here at South Carolina. All right, so they weren't necessarily the hot name when we hired them. People that are in the profession know about Dow Loggins. So I read your article this morning, Gene, and that's great. I'm sure in your research, you did more than just say, well, I haven't heard of that guy before. Let me see what his stats said. Oh, well, he had a run as a coordinator in the NFL that maybe wasn't as successful that he wanted. So he must not be very good. Surely you did more research than that, Gene. And it's not just Gene. It's a lot of people. So surely everybody that wants to critique every hire that we make here, I'm sure you guys knew that Dow Loggins turned down a coordinator job in the SEC last year, correct? Everybody knew that, right? I'm sure you guys know that I'm the fourth SEC head coach that's reached out to him in the last two weeks about coming to work for him. So we were fortunate to hire Dow Loggins because there were a lot of other people that were interested in hiring Dow Loggins as well. I'm sure you guys reached out to Bill Parcells, who Dow worked for. Anybody? I'm sure the people on the outside, all the experts on social media, I'm sure they called Sean Payton, arguably one of the greatest NFL coaches of all time, uh, to talk to Sean Payton about Dow. I'm sure you reached out to Kyle Shanahan, the head coach of the San Francisco 49ers. All those guys are guys that Dow worked for. Did you call Connor Shaw? Alshon Jeffrey. Coached, Al, Dow coached Alshon Jeffrey with the Chicago Bears. And I'll keep my conversation with Alshon private, but it was pretty dang, pretty dang special what he told me. I talked to John Fox, former head coach of the Carolina Panthers, Chicago Bears, Denver Broncos, about Dow. Clyde Christensen, current quarterbacks coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Sylvester Croom, longtime NFL coach who just went into the Hall of Fame <clears throat> for college football last week. James Franklin, current head coach at Penn State. Stan Drayton, current head coach at Temple University. All people that he worked with or Dow was the coordinator for. So we hired a big time coach and couldn't be more excited about hiring uh, Dow and the text messages that I got from people that he's worked with or coached over the last however many years in the NFL uh, validate that for sure. Uh, you don't last 16 years in the NFL like, uh, like he has without being a really, really good football coach, and we're fortunate to have him here at South Carolina. Why Dow Loggins? One, he's a fantastic person that I've known since I was an assistant coach here at South Carolina uh, previously. Uh, why Dow? He's an elite recruiter. He's shown that in his two years already at the college level as well. I love the idea of being able to take what he's done in the NFL as an assistant coach and as a coordinator for multiple teams and marry that with what he's learned at Arkansas the last couple of years being a part of their offense and realizing that you can have quote a quote unquote a pro style offense but then also it doesn't have to be as wordy complicated voluminous whatever you want to say you can really narrow things down so I think being able to take what they've done at Arkansas and what he's learned in his career and marry it to best fit us is uh, pretty cutting edge, if you will me. He's the perfect fit for what we need right now uh, as a football program. 
Uh, he makes our program better. His personality, his recruiting skills, his fit in that offensive staff room as well, he'll make us better. You know, we certainly did a lot of good things on offense last year here at South Carolina, but we need to be better to say the least. We need to be more consistent to say the least, and I believe that Dow can help us do that. We've certainly got to cut down on turnovers. It makes me sick that two years in a row now we've turned the ball over more than any team in the SEC. So the fact that we've won seven games and eight this year with a chance to win nine, having turned the ball over more than any team in this conference is a minor miracle in some ways. So we've got to do a better job of cutting down turnovers as well. Uh, the NFL, and Dow will talk about it here in a second, I believe is all about matchups and, and getting the ball to your best players and finding ways to get them touches. I think he'll really help us being able to get the ball to our quote unquote playmakers as well. And then being able to continue, like I said, to streamline our, our offense and, uh, and, and what we're doing to make us better as well. He's had some conversations with uh, uh, recruits that we're recruiting or are currently committed. And I wrote down some of the responses of some of the text messages. One, one young man that's committed to us wrote back, he's absolutely awesome and he is the perfect guy for me to play for. You know, that was after one phone call that he had. So the response from uh, recruits and then he's talked to some of our current players as well has been off the charts. Uh, there's, like I said, there's a lot of excitement and momentum uh, going on right now with what we're doing here at South Carolina football as well. And got an opportunity to add to that now with hiring Dow and then going into bowl prep starting tomorrow as well. So any questions before I turn it over to him? Shane, uh, first of all, will Dow call plays in the bowl game? Uh, no. Well, he and I really haven't even talked about that, but no, I'm telling him now he's not. So um, <laughs> I think he knew that. No, it's things we talked about. He's going to be around here for the next, um, what's today, Wednesday. We start practice tomorrow. He'll be here through the weekend, around recruits this weekend. Certainly, you know, value his input and he'll be around, but I don't think that's fair for him to come in and all of a sudden, you know, take over the, the coaching of our offense right now. And with play calling, obviously he hasn't done it at the college level before. So what did you see in him that says it's not going to be an adjustment, you know, you that, that he can handle that once it's time? Well, he's done it in the NFL. And, yes, the NFL and the college games are – are different, but you don't last as long as he did in the NFL, and you know get be 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 a coordinator for multiple teams, starting with the Tennessee Titans and one head coach, and then the Chicago Bears with a second head coach as well, and then Miami Dolphins and New York Jets without uh, knowing what you're doing. And uh, certainly it's different, but he'll tell you. And so much of the game planning and play calling is done during the week as well as a staff. And then certainly you got to have a feel for it and be able to do it on game days. But knowing what a football junkie he is and uh, how intelligent he is, have no concerns about that either. Uh, when you, I guess, did your research on, on Dow and, and looked at all the circumstances with each team and whether or not he was actually calling plays, because you know, some of the head coaches obviously do that in the NFL, how did you find that research and, and how, how long did it take you to kind of come to the conclusions that, that you felt like you needed to reach after looking into all those? Um, not, I mean, it was a process. Now, I've, when Dow was the offensive coordinator of the Tennessee Titans, I went to Nashville and spent some time visiting them and watching practice and going to meetings. When Dow was with the Chicago Bears, Alshon was playing up there at the time. So I went up there one May and spent a couple of days in Chicago and I was able to go to meetings and watch practice and things like that and see Alshon when he was with uh, the Dolphins. I went down to Miami a couple times and, and was around meetings and on the practice field. So I've, and was in staff meetings as well with the offense. So I've, I've seen him in those environments. So I knew a lot of that already. And then certainly I knew what I knew, but I, wanted, I know how important this hire is. I know how um, humongous this hire is for, where we're, for what's coming next as a program. So. You guys know me, like I take my time and, and I'm going to be very thorough and I'm going to talk to a lot of people, not just about Dow. I mean, I talked to a lot of people about this opportunity and, um, you know, kept coming back to him. But then just being able to talk to people um, that he's worked for in the NFL, uh, general managers that reached out to me on their own just to, you know, say, I haven't talked to Dow, but here's what I think and just 
seeing it with my own eyes at different places over his career as he's matured and, and, and gained experience. Uh, but then talking to people also as well, you know, validated that. And then, you know, communication with players. I think it's important to talk to players that he's coached as well. And um, I was able to do that also. Shane, were you, uh, were you surprised at all by any of the opt-outs or the transfer portal guys that you had? And how will that change how you prepare for the bowl game? Um, opt-outs, no. I mean, those are conversations that we don't spend a ton of time talking about it during the season, but had a general idea just from talking to players, even bef even some of those guys like Zach Pickens that came back to play this year. You know, a lot of those weren't, um, weren't surprises. Uh, transfers, I don't think you're ever surprised. You know, you, it's, it's, um, it's, <laughs> it's tough out there right now, guys. Um, and we're in a, Great situation here at Carolina. I mean, I look around and there's other other schools that have close to 20 right now of their players in the portal and things like that. And you just realize that's part of it. And and wish guys that that aren't here well. Um, I mean, I had a text message from somebody that transferred last year that played for another school yesterday, just you know checking on me and saying hello. And so I appreciate that. So try and leave on good terms and wish them well. But. I don't mean this in a negative way. I don't spend a whole lot of time worrying about the guys that aren't here. Uh, we got a bunch of really special young men and people in this program right now that, that are here and excited to get back to work. And, and certainly uh, it changes prep, you know, a little bit. We were in that situation last year when, when, um, when uh, what, Luke was hurt and Jason had already left at quarterback and we weren't really sure what the quarterback situation was going to look. So we've been in that situation uh, before and we haven't really – dove into it because it's been all recruiting and then coaches just kind of working on Notre Dame on their own the last couple of weeks. But uh, we'll get back in here tomorrow as a staff and really kind of figure out the best plan of attack. But certainly it'll be more challenging when you're missing guys. Uh, but but um, that's why we that's why we get paid to coach, you know, be creative and trying to come up with a game plan. Hey, Shane, two questions yep. for you. I know at the beginning of the search you said you wanted to find someone who fit the culture that you mm -hmm. were building here. Also, Connor said that Coach Loggins is a home run when it comes to the culture that you are building here. Beyond the um, X's and O's, can you give us some specifics about why he fits that culture? And also, uh, mention the transfers and opt-outs. How challenging is it trying to prepare a team for a bowl? And it's going to look much different than the one that you finished regular season with. And also, preparing to face a team that is also going to look different as well. Yeah, you gave me three there, Rick. You tried testing me, man. I'm a little rusty. Um, Dow in the culture, because I know what kind of person he is. He's got a great, you know, uh, he's a great person, great family as well. That's important to me. You got to be able to work well with others in this building and help the people around you get better. And, you know, as I went through this process, um, you know, like I said, I know how important this hire is, you know, and, and I kept trying to call somebody and find somebody to say something bad you know, about him. And it was not me calling and saying, hey, I'm interested in hiring Dow, and Log Dow Loggins as the offensive coordinator was calling, just saying, hey, do you tell me what you know about Dow Loggins. And it was just whoever I talked to continued to be over the top uh, positive. I think he's got a great way with people of, of uh, making everyone feel important, valuing everyone for what they bring to the table. That's evident with what he's been able to do in recruiting. That's evident with the, f uh, the fact the, pe the way the people at Arkansas feel about him and uh, don't didn't want him to leave, whether it be you know current players or fans, staff, whoever. Um, and then, like I said, just what I know about him as well. I think he'd be a fit from that. I know he'd be a fit from that standpoint. Um, transfer portal. The Notre Dame was the last one, and then ours. Yeah. It's challenging in a lot of ways. It's kind of like going into um, January when we come back in January after the bowl game and we're starting new. You know, it's going to be different. You know, we, we played a lot of games this year with two and three tight ends on the field at times. Well, we're not going to be able to do that against Notre Dame, you know. So you've got to be uh, creative in what you do. And we've got a lot of really good players in this program. So you, you figure out – what gives you the best chance to be successful against uh, the next opponent with the personnel that you have. And then we've got um, uh, two weeks of practice to really get ready uh, to do that. And then same thing with, with Notre Dame as well. I know they've, had, they've lost some guys 
excuse me, in the um, in the transfer portal, and, and their team will look different as well. But I just think that's right now college football and 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 bowl games. The teams that you you're going to start seeing playing in bowl games are going to look a lot different than um, than the teams you saw the last week of the regular season, uh, and and. It's not a surprise. I mean, we knew the night before the Clemson game, we talked about it in the team meeting, that when we come back for the bowl, the people in this room, there's going to be some people in this room that aren't here when we start bowl prep. And, and we knew that then. So uh, you just kind of figure out what you got and, and, um, and go to, coach, coach, to quote Coach Spurry or just go try and coach him up. Shane, do you think Coach Loggins was successful in his last four years as an NFL coordinator? And if so, how do you define success? I define success, you know, I think you take the things that you have available to him, the things that you have available, and I think you've certainly got to look at every uh, circumstance as well. I think you can take stats and, and shape them any way you want to shape them, Gene. You know, I think there's a deeper story as well. Um, I think I, don't, I, I really didn't dive into uh, exactly every game he coached in that 16-game six, season. But I also know from talking to John Fox, the former head coach of the Bears, he talked about the, the, some of the struggles they faced the year that Dow was up there and Jay Cutler got hurt as your starting quarterback, correct? So, you know, I don't, I don't generally research Jay's history, but when you lose your starting quarterback in the NFL, um, I think it's tough. Kyle Shanahan is considered probably the greatest or the best offensive coach or one of the best offensive coaches in the NFL right now. And he was the offensive coordinator of the Cleveland Browns when Dow was the quarterback's coach. They worked together. Um, I, didn't, I don't really know the history of the Cleveland Browns in that particular season, but I don't think it was very good that year as well. And some, nobody questions Kyle Shanahan's ability. So he'll be the first to tell you there's things that certainly they could have been better. And when you're near the bottom of the, of the NFL and – in statistical rankings, surely you don't want to be there. But again, I think you can take any stat and, and shape it any way you want. I think there's a deeper, deeper uh, uh, investigation that goes into that as well. You know, I know enough from talking to people and knowing how football smart he is that uh, I've got total confidence in that as well. And you know, I wasn't picking on Eugene. You, You're not the only one, man. All right. Don't get all sensitive on me now, Gene. All right, come on. <laughs> Dow dealt with the New York City media for two years, so dealing with you guys will be cake. So, Shane, I know I that's think... a compliment, David. All right, okay. Yeah, I mean, okay. <laughs> Shane, I think the last three or four guys you've hired have come, come at least immediately from the from NFL uh -huh. situations. I, I guess one is that just a coincidence, and I know Sat and Jody had been college guys before that. But what about that transfers to what you're trying to build? Why is it that that's something maybe you've looked for? And I guess with Dow more specifically, what about that you feel like fit with what you wanted now here? Yeah, I don't think uh, – I didn't, I didn't seek – excuse me. I didn't start out uh, saying I'm going to hire somebody from the NFL uh, that had an NFL background. I really didn't. And same thing when I hired um, Sat or, or any of those guys, Jody, Sterling Lucas. You know, I'm looking for the best, the best uh, person available as well. And, um, you know, if, if I think Dow's a great coach, but I think being in, in the college game the last two years – He'll probably tell you, and we talked about this a little bit, has made him even better as a coach being in college the last two years, uh, for sure. And just seeing how, seeing the, the similarities with the differences, but how to make it, make it both, make it better. Um, uh, but no, I, but I do think when you are able to hire somebody from an NFL background, I think it certainly is a bonus in a lot of ways. Um, the not what you learn in the NFL, because it's all football all the time, you don't recruit. You know, you go into the building, and if 90% of my day is recruiting and 10% is coaching in the NFL, it's all coaching and just studying football. So I think there's value in that. I think from a recruiting standpoint, the fact that he's been in the NFL for so long and has coached so many different quarterbacks, whether it be successful veterans or rookies or whoever, uh, it helps. You know, Sterling Lucas being able to show a recruit or our current team some of the things he did with the Baltimore Ravens and Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, some of the things we did on third downs this year, pressure-wise, or things that he brought from the Ravens that we utilized on defense. So I think there's value in that. But uh, at the end of the day, Ben, I'm looking for the best coach and the best person available uh, for for a fit. And and 
you know, I know it's cheesy, but I use that analogy of that bus and wagon earlier. And I think it's the same thing with its coaches. It's all the people. I mean, this is a big, I don't want to use the word corporation, but there's a lot of moving parts in this facility from players to coach to staff. And you're trying to get all the, excuse me, trying to get all the pieces uh, of the puzzle to, to fit the right way and keep moving it forward. And uh, if it happens to be a guy with an NFL background, great, but just trying to find the right fit. Your Eagles are still on a roll. <laughs> They're cruising. Oh, no, man. It hurts. <laughs> um, you know, the with the decommits with the portal mm -hmm. right now, you know, do you have any concerns at this point about trying to transition, you know, a major coordinator and retention during that transition and kind of what do the next steps look like to try to a keep the guys that you have committed, keep the guys that you have on the roster yeah. as you make that switch? I think it's a challenge for anyone, whether you're hiring a new coach or the same the staff is intact. I mean, it's just part of it's part of it. Um, you know, at the at the End of the regular season, other schools are trying to hire your coaches, and that's taking place here. We got a lot of successful people in this building that other schools are interested in. Um, there's recruiting, there's the transfer portal. Same thing after the bowl game. There's going to be another wave of, not, I hope not here, but uh, there's another wave of college football players that enter the transfer portal after bowl games as well. After that, there's the NFL season's going to they're going to start making changes and people are going to be trying to hire coaches and stuff like that. So I think it's just one of those things, the end of, everybody thinks the end of the season is kind of when you can kind of take a breath, but the two weeks at the end of the regular season, three weeks, and then the two, three weeks after the bowl game are like the most hectic time of the year, just because you're trying to put all those pieces in place, whether you're trying to hire, whether you have a new coach coming in or not. But um, like I said, it's, it's one of those, Emily, that everybody's, everybody's uh, dealing with it right now across college football and, and it's just the landscape right now with the portal and recruiting that there's going to be changes and, and things like that. And you just keep trying to, you know, recruit the, the best players available and, and, and best people available. And we've got a lot of those as well. You know, like I said, so many of those text messages, you win with people. And we've got some championship level people that are um, committed to this program and will be here soon, which I'm really excited about adding them. People don't talk about all the people that – still are coming and that are still in this building right now as well. And, and uh, you know, Ty Kroger said it best. He tweeted it last week. All we got is all we need or all we, yeah, all, all, we, all we got is all we need, I think. So I thought that was pretty good, you know. And we're trying to add some more to that as well, obviously. As a Browns fan, I can give you some look back on that. Yes, <laughs> but maybe you can educate yeah. <laughs> everyone as well. Um, Thank you. Do we know who the quarterback's coach is going to be? For bowl game? No. Not yet? No. And what were I do, but we're not going to get into all that in here no. right now, so <laughs> sorry. And, and what were conversations like with Marshawn before he opted in into the portal? Mm. They were good. We had a uh, – we talked in my office. So, um, we talked in my office, uh, I like think, the Tuesday after the Clemson game, and it could not have been more positive. Uh, we had a fantastic conversation, and, and things were absolutely – Fantastic. And um, he went back home. He's home right now. And obviously when he got back home, some things in his mind changed that I wasn't aware of or that we didn't talk about that day. So talked on Sunday or Monday. I was up in D.C. actually recruiting all day Sunday and Sunday night. And uh, we talked on Monday morning, him and his mom and I, for a long time. And, you know, like I said, wish him well. Hi, Thank Phil. you. Got a couple for you. Right. Did you decide to part ways with Coach Satterfield after the Florida game? Did I decide to part ways? With Coach Satterfield I after didn't know the Florida I, I didn't know I parted ways with Sat. Who told you that? It was reported by one of the Gamecock websites. Oh, uh, well, I know this is going to be shocking. One of the Gamecock websites was wrong. Um, sorry for anyone that re reported that. There's a lot of false info out yeah. there, unfortunately. You know, I got to deal with that with recruits and things like that, of things they read on the internet, which I hate to break it to you guys. The internet and Twitter is not real life. Yeah. Uh, so, no, I did not decide to part ways with Sat after the Florida game. Okay. Um, and to follow up on Colin's question, uh, um, as far as running the offense and yeah. the coordinating and all that, since it won't be um, – Coach Loggins, um, do you have I – mean, obviously you have a plan. Can you share the plan? Oh, how you like, I don't know that? if you were in the press conference the last – that Sunday night in the stadium. I'm no, dis, no disrespect, guys, where I'm probably not going to tell you guys because to me that's a strategic advantage for Notre Dame uh, if we say that whoever, Montario, Justin, 
uh, Greg Atkins, Lonnie Teasley, Dow Loggins, um, uh, Jody Wright, whoever is running the offense. And to me, you can go back and look at their backgrounds and where they've been as well. It'll be a group effort, Phil. You know, no matter who calls the plays, we've all been working to put together a plan for the offense down in Jacksonville in a couple weeks. And that's what we're continuing to do. And, and uh, when, we get to, when we get to Jacksonville on December 30th, we'll all be on the same page. And you know, I'll be heavily involved. And whoever's calling it, we'll, we'll call it. But it'll be a group effort that we put together. Kind of going to the other coordinator news here recently. Pete Lambeau got an extension yesterday. Yep. Kind of what were those conversations like with him in the last week, and how important was it for you to just get him locked in for those extra three years now? Yeah, it was important. Uh, it's important to keep a lot of these guys. You know, um, Chance and, and Coach Tanner have been very supportive of the staff and the things that we want to do. And, and uh, you know, there'll be more uh, hopefully come in here that we can announce here. But Pete was certainly somebody that, uh, you know, Throughout the season, you know that I knew, like a lot of our guys, that um, you know Pete was was very valuable to this program and has done a great job with our special teams and program in general. And certainly uh, wanted to reward him accordingly. So appreciate Ray and Chance and and uh, President Amaritas and our board for for their support. Correct me if I'm wrong. I, I think my takeaway from, from what you were saying earlier was you were pretty satisfied with the offensive system you all have been running the last couple of years. It may be just a little bit too complex in, in verbiage, but um, is, is that accurate? What, what makes you feel that way? And also, how did Dowell kind of sell himself in terms of being able to take the offense to the next level with a little bit more consistency? Yeah, I think from my standpoint with the offense, uh, we, we needed to be more consistent. There's no question about it. Um, for as good as we looked at against Tennessee, we know how we looked against Florida. And look, it's a grind every week in this league, guys. It's the toughest league in America, and there's some <laughs> real, real dudes on defenses that we play. So you're not going to go out every single week and score 60. But I believe we've got to be more consistent, starting with me. I mean, it's not just all sad. It's all of us, the entire offensive staff, myself, our players. We've got to be more consistent as well. I don't think we need to come in here and just completely blow up stuff and we scored 63 points against Tennessee and 31 against a really good Clemson defense so not all is is broken but we absolutely need to be better and uh, you know Dow's got the freedom terminology we talked about it terminology schematics I mean you know we hired him for a reason uh, but I believe you know he the reason I hired him and, and whatnot is because one he, he can take some of the things that they did in the NFL and there are some similarities with what we did last year and what he's, his background is, but then taking the things they did at Arkansas also and, and uh, blending that with us to continue to make us better. You know, Arkansas certainly did some, has done some really good things on offense with Coach Browse, their offensive coordinator, and Dow's you know, worked very closely with him the last two years and, like I said, has learned a lot to make our program, uh, our program better also and believe we can. So we'll get in there. I mean, right now it's getting in here and meeting the players and kind of seeing our personnel and and what best fits for what he wants to do, and then trying to win a bowl game, and then we'll get back in here in, in January and get full speed ahead on what the 2023 offense here at South Carolina is going to look like. Look like because obviously there's a lot of there's a lot of people that aren't in our program right now that will be a part of our program in 2023, whether it be incoming freshmen, whether it be transfers that come in, and and uh, we're in the process of doing that. Um, with Dow to, to make our offense better. And like I said, the response that we've gotten from a lot of young men that we're trying to bring into the program about him has been uh, over the top uh, uh, ecstatic. So looking forward to getting to work. So sorry, he'll keep me up here forever. My opening press conference, he kept me up here for an hour and a half answering questions as well. So I'm going to sit down and, and uh, excited for you guys to get to know a great guy and a great coach, Dow Loggins. Thank you.